Um, good morning, everybody. Um, it's lovely to be here today. Um, I'm going to talk about Active by Design, which was one of our new campaigns. Um, but I think it's also helpful just to put it into context and talk a little bit about the Design Council and what we do. Um, can you just raise your hands if you've heard of the Design Council? That's pretty good. That's nearly everybody. Um, and if I was to ask you if you knew actually what we do on a day-to-day -day basis, how many of you could actually say what we do? <laughs> One, two people. Okay, well, I hope... <laughs> okay, three, four. Um, well, I hope to, to shed some light on that um, today. Um, essentially, our mission, we're a charity, and like all charities, um, we have a mission that's based around um, kind of, you know, doing something better for the world. Ours is to champion great design, but very much great design that improves lives. Um, and I hope to sort of explain a little bit more about what we mean by that. Um, our work is underpinned by four sort of focus areas, um, and these are areas that we believe design can really make a difference in. And I'll talk about each of these um, in a little bit more depth. Um, but just picking up um, on um, you know, the, the earlier talk about sort of innovation creativity, we really see design, being the Design Council, as being the bridge between creativity and innovation and using design-led processes that can really make innovation a, a reality. Um, underneath our focus areas, we have four values. Um, design-led, principled, agile and entrepreneurial, and partnership and collaboration. Um, and those are values that are within the organisation, but also held by the staff that work at the Design Council as well. Um, you'd expect us to be design-led, and um, that's the programmes that we run, but actually we try to be design-led in the way that we do business, the way that we work with each other, and the workspace that we occupy. Um, and if you're out in the refectory, you'll see our new exhibition material, Design Council in a Box, and that came about by following a design-led process internally with staff to reimagine how we could go to exhibitions and how we could do it differently. So that's an example of how we might do it internally. Um, principled means that actually the work that we do, we believe in. We want to make a difference. We want to do things that are actually going to either improve people's lives or make a difference to the communities and the places that we live in. And the reason why Agile and Entrepreneurial is that um, although we've been around a long time, we've been around 70 years, we'll be celebrating 70 years in December, um, we only became a charity three years ago. Before that, we were affiliated to government, um, and we're in a process of real change. Um, and people in the organisation joke about us being a 70-year-old startup. We're having to change the processes that we use um, and really work in a very different way. Um, and that's why the fourth value, partnership and collaboration, is key. You know, we need to work with other organisations. We want to work with a wide range of people. Um, this collaboration with City University is a, is a great example of us working together on something um, to, to generate new ideas. So I'm going to speed through these because I'm aware that if I talk too long on um, different focus areas, I won't get long enough to talk about active by design. Um, but first of all, thinking about our focus areas, this stat here, five hours per day, can anyone think what I might be referring to? <laughs> no, it's, it's not actually, but um, we do come back to how much time we spend sitting down. Um, five hours per day is actually um, the, as we live today in this room, collectively, we'll be adding five hours to our longevity. We're all living older, we're living, um, we're, you know, we're going to be here a lot more, and the impact that that's having um, on the world in terms of impact on housing, on our communities, on social isolation, um, the cost to us as a nation um, is, is massive. So the ageing population is something that we see as a real issue, but one that we can tackle through design-led methods. Um, and that's why one of our focus areas is ageing better by design. Um, we really want to work with um, communities, with the government, with local authorities on how we can improve um, our response to an ageing population, um, but so that we can improve quality of life um, for everybody. I'm going to touch on one example. We've done a number of challenges in the area of ageing. Um, a big dementia challenge a couple of years ago, um, but also one that looked at connecting older people, reducing isolation. Um, and if you're not aware of our open innovation challenges, um, this is a competition that we run. We do a call for ideas. Um, 
through that call for ideas, we select some of the ideas that we think have got potential. And then using design-led processes, we use a rapid prototyping service, um, mentor the people to create the ideas and then test them with users, um, test them on the ground, and then give seed funding to develop those ideas um, into real working products and services that we then help launch. Um, and Casserole is one of the um, projects that came out of our um, Keeping Connected um, challenge. Uh, casserole is like a peer-to-peer -peer version of Meals on Wheels. So Meals on Wheels um, is a service that actually local authorities are having to cut back on um, due to budget cuts. Only the most needy are getting Meals on Wheels. Um, whereas Casserole offers peer-to-peer -peer meals. You can sign up, you can say that you're a cook in a particular area, that you've got extra food, um, you'll be cooking an extra meal and is there someone in the area need it and then by using the internet you can match these people up somebody who needs a meal with someone who's cooking a meal um, it's a really simple system that's made possible by the internet um, and as well as providing a really good service it's also providing that um, you know that need for company you bring the meal around you get to have a conversation that older person gets some company um, and it's really bringing communities together this launched and trialled in the Surrey area of um, Rygate and Banstead, but it's now being um, extended to local authorities around the country, and it's going from, from strength to strength. Um, I particularly like this one, and I've seen sort of similar spin-offs happening in different communities, which is fantastic. This rather unintelligible graph here um, brings me to my second focus area. Um, I don't expect you to be able to read it, but um, the red line that's going to the top um, is the design index and through a number of studies that we've done at the Design Council we found that where organisations really embed design principles into their organisation, into their business processes, they see better business results. Um, which is why growth by design is an area for us. We've worked with businesses for a long time. We work with startups, um, SMEs, right up to large corporations. Um, but it's not just about <coughs> economic growth, it's about you know, helping these businesses to stay in business, to expand their portfolios, to bring on new jobs. It's about creating jobs and prosperity, which is why it still fits very much with our mission. Um, this is an example um, that we particularly like because um, it's a business that came through our SME programme, our design leadership programme. Um, they worked with one of our design associates. They were at a small SME in Sheffield making clay drainage pipes and they were looking at the business, clay drainage pipes were being replaced by other types of pipes and their business was going down. Um, they needed to reinvent themselves but they weren't necessarily sure to take it in. They thought that they could go into <coughs> flower pots um, and with the help of our design associate they were able to look at the total market, look at their point of differences um, and what came about was Yorkshire flower pots, so really using the provenance of um, where the flower pots were being made um, and creating something that actually had design principles. Um, they're working with the local university now to help them with their product development, creating product that is of a superior quality to some of the competitors that are around. And the business has gone from strength to strength. Before we got involved, it was about a £500,000 business, and three years later, it was a £6 million business. Um, so it's really transformed um, that local business in, in that area and created more jobs as a result. <coughs> okay. um, this quote here says that basically trust um, in other people around us has um, reduced. In, in 1959, we felt that um, we could trust people. 60% of us felt we could trust our, our neighbours and people. Now it's 30%, um, and I'm sure it's declined even further since then which really, although we're more integrated society digitally, um, we seem to have lost some of those community aspects. Um, it's even greater, I think, across the rest of the country. I only moved to London a couple of years ago, and I've actually felt a greater sense of community in London, strangely enough, even though it's a massive city. Um, I think because actually London feels it needs to create those communities. But we do see um, a real issue um, with communities and that's why another focus area is ours is communities by design and how we can enable communities to use design and understand the design and planning system to have a say in how um, their places, their communities, um, their buildings, the built environment um, are designed. 
Um, one project um, that we worked on was with Tower Hamlets. Um, our built environment team, which is known as CABE, um, stands for Architecture and Built Environment, they worked with the community of Tower Hamlets um, to really reimagine what the Tower Hamlets community could be like. So um, Tower Hamlets, you've got eight square miles of East London. You've got really bad issues of child poverty there and fragmented um, community groups. But actually everybody wanting to create a vision of a community. So you've got 24 different hamlets. And we worked with Tower Hamlets to work on the ground with the people of Tower Hamlets to reimagine each of those hamlets and what their character should be, building on the historic nature of those um, different areas, bringing out their characteristics, and creating kind of unique places such as Limehouse and Bow, um, and really helping to try and engender a sense of community um, with that local authority. So that's sort of an ongoing project um, for the local authority there. But that's something that we do across um, the UK, working with different local authorities and community groups on their local plans, their neighbourhood plans, um, and enabling them to use design. Okay. <coughs> and now I get to um, Active by Design, which is a campaign that um, we've started in response to quite shocking statistics like this. Um, 60% of men and 58% of women in England are overweight or obese. And um, there's a couple of other stats here. Um, this one particularly I find shocking. A quarter of British adults now walk for less than nine minutes a day. And that includes time spent getting to the car and doing the shopping. Um, I was pleased to see on coming in to the university today that there is some signage encouraging people to take the stairs rather than to take the lifts. Um, and then I think we all found that we've had a lot of stairs to, take to get to here. <laughs> so we've probably done more than our nine minutes, although I've been assured it's two minutes to get from the refectory up here, if you know the way. Um, <laughs> the, the other um, big issue is that seven out of the ten of the um, UK population sit or lie in bed for 20 hours a day. And I think most people recognise that our lifestyles are so much more sedentary. You know, we've had a massive shift. You know, majority of us work in offices. Um, we had to do an assessment at work where we looked at marking out our day from getting up to getting to the office to going home, how much of the time was spent sitting. And we were shocked that it was about 80 or 90% of our day was spent sitting. So at the Design Council, we're trying to do so much more to, to get up and get out of our... Um, get out of spaces, whether that be walking meetings, um, you know, one-to-ones can be done walking from one place to another, actually changing the location for meetings, walking up onto, um, you know, a different meeting room on a different floor, um, having a stand-up meeting, um, those are quite in vogue now. And I think you might have seen some people have actually installed um, laptops and computers where you actually stand up and use them. Um, so you're just getting, getting out. And the reason this is so important is the impact on our health. Um, it's thank you. It's um, estimated that physical inactivity is costing the NHS nine hundred million pounds a year. So that's the, the impact on all those other disease, those diseases and um, ill health that is caused by lack of activity, by obesity, um, and the rise in things like heart disease. Um, and it's the fourth leading risk factor in global mortality. Um, but it has to be said that these stats are particularly um, prevalent in the developed world. Um, you don't see as much inactivity in the developing world. There's some quite horrible photographs. I'll skip over those. Um, our timing is, is pretty good. We launched the campaign a couple of weeks ago. And last week, um, the All-Party Commission on Physical Activity launched their own report, the first of two, looking very much at this issue. They've taken a much broader view than ourselves. They're looking at um, the impact of inactivity across a number of different areas. But they did have, out of their four recommendations, they had one key one that really chimed with our work, um, which is to ensure that local and national policy um, tackles this, designs physical activity back into everyday life. Um, through active travel and leisure. We see it as more than just going to the gym or doing more exercise. You know, we've had those messages um, drummed into us time and time again. But actually, this is more, more than going to the gym, more than doing exercise. This is about activity in your everyday lives. This is about incrementally increasing the amount of activity um, without 
putting a burden on, oh, I have to go to the gym. Actually, let's get off the bus three stops earlier. Um, let's walk to work rather than you know, take, the, take the underground. And the other area that they recommended was making active workplaces the norm. And that's something else that we're really interested in, um, creating more active workplaces. And I'll show a few examples of that. So our proposition with the Active by Design campaign is to promote the use of good design to encourage greater levels of daily physical activity in buildings and public spaces, as well as increasing access to healthy food. And we've kept it relatively narrow because it's about buildings and public spaces, but our campaign is very much a call to anyone interested in this area to, to join us and think about actually how we can do this in other areas and other spaces too because it's not about us doing one thing it's about a lot of us doing lots of smaller things um, we've also got backing from former chief medical officer um, who says actually if medication existed that had a similar effect to exercise we'd be calling it a wonder drug or a miracle cure um, it's, it's amazing that we don't do more of it. So why are we doing this? Well, it very much chimes with our mission. Um, we do believe that by increasing activity levels, it's going to improve the health of everybody um, and enrich people's lives. Um, and it also has, you saw the stats about the cost of the NHS, it also has social and economic benefits um, across the country, if we can get this right. So we do see it as a really big ambition. Um, but we want to see it brought to life through simple, practical solutions. Um, and that's one of the reasons I'm here today, um, is to talk about the, the scholarship brief for um, the Masters in Innovation, Creativity and Leadership. Um, and I'm going to come back to that in a moment, but that's about coming up with some simple, practical and innovative solutions um, to increase um, act, act, daily activity. So um, it's a growing movement, and we take a lot of our inspiration from New York. Um, if any of you have been to New York recently, um, it's a much more active city than it was um, even three years ago. Um, they've got the High Line, they've got a centre for active design, um, and they have a mayor that really supports it, so he's able to pull together all, everything that's happening in New York and have a really integrated approach um, to how the city functions. It's a little bit more complex here um, in the UK, um, but it is something we're working really closely with on local authorities. And when we talk to local authorities about how they improve their health budget, active design is something we're going to be talking to them about because um, it's a really clear way that they can make improvements. Um, some examples of sort of different fitness happening across the world, including sort of Amsterdam. We've got the High Line in York, New York, which is a, a fabulous park in a disused um, railway. And then for us, we're very much looking at the role of buildings and how we can improve the buildings and spaces we're in to increase activity levels. Um, we're in quite a privileged position at the Design Council because we get to see designs of buildings before they've even been built. So we can help to embed active design principles right at the start um, of a building's design and actually put the staircases at the front, um, recommend, make recommendations that staircases are put at the front, um, that elevators use things like stop-start, where actually they go to every other um, floor, so encouraging people to walk different floors. We've also, as part of our launch, um, issued some guidelines. So on our stand in the refectory, you'll see our short guide um, to Active by Design. Um, that's online as well, can be downloaded. It's got some principles, it's got some ideas for different groups, different audiences of how they can get involved, from planners to local authorities to academic institutions. And we also worked with Derwent London on four of their buildings to either customise some of their signage um, or input some new signage um, to increase their residents and tenants to take the stairs. So I've um, got a few examples here of some signage on the floor, um, customising some signage in the T building in Shoreditch, giving people reasons to take the stairs. Okay, so I've only got a minute left. So um, the brief for City University's um, MA course in innovation, leadership and, um, sorry, innovation, creativity and leadership. Um, we're basically asking um, people who are interested in applying for this um, scholarship, um, how can we increase activity in buildings and public spaces? Um, the brief goes into a lot more detail and there's a copy of the brief in your delegate packs. Um, 
but we really want sort of different ideas, innovative ideas, um, thinking about it in a completely different way. Um, and on offer is a fantastic prize of um, a year's scholarship, full scholarship worth um, at least sixteen and a half thousand pounds. And then there's some runners-up prizes um, of some bursaries towards the cost of the course as well, which I think is fantastic. Um, and although we asked for a written brief of seven hundred and fifty words um, in response to a proposal, um, we'd also really like you know sort of whether it be video or some slides, something that brings your idea to life as well. Um, because we'll be reviewing the, um, the entries um, in early July um, and there'll be um, people from Design Council but also people from the city um, and um, other people active in this space looking at these. And the reason we do it is, you know, we really hope there'll be some fantastic ideas um, and we've got Cities University supporting putting some of these ideas into practice if we think um, that they would work. So. I'm really excited about the opportunity for bringing some of them to life as well. Um, and we have a conference in September looking at Active by Design. And um, I'm hoping that maybe one of the ideas might be something that we can showcase um, at that conference and share it. Because I think the idea behind this campaign is very much that it's not about taking ownership of an area. It's about sharing some of the great work that's happening up and down the country so that other people can take it on board um, and use it in their own area. So, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent timekeeping. So we mm -hmm. have five minutes again for questions. Anyone? Yeah. What happened to the intellectual property right on my ideas and so become the, the winner? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> for student, for student, people are already students at the university. Intellectual pro property normally rests with the students if, if it's an idea that's been developed solely by themselves. Mm. Yeah, and I think with the competition as well. Um, you know, we, last year's. Uh, unfortunately, last year's winner, well, not unfortunately, very fortunately, she's gone on maternity <laughs> leave. It's wonderful. But um, we've encouraged her to develop her idea, but yeah. it's her idea yeah. to develop. Yeah. 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 We're, not, we're not taking a share of IP of the. A few more hands. I think yours went up first. Um, how do you reconcile active design with accessibility? Yeah. It, it is, you know, lifts still exist. Um, and we're not saying take lifts out of buildings at all. Um, in fact, in the T building, I think it was, you know, they were thinking about maybe um, keeping the lifts so that actually they were there for people who needed to use them, as opposed to um, making everyone, you know, encouraging everyone to use the lift. Um, actually, with more people taking the stairs, then you've actually got the lifts free for people who really need them. So, you know, accessibility in terms of when we look at buildings, but right, is, is a massive um, issue. Um, and one that, you know, there are key guidelines and standards that, that need to be followed. Um, so it's kind of like an add-on. Yeah, but uh, is there a worry then about kind of increasing social exclusion and things like that? Because it's very much like, you know, you've got a different disability or, you know, a reason why you can't do it, etc. And you're sort of sent down that road and everyone mm. else is encouraged to take the other one. See what I mean? I'm mm. sure there must be some kind of middle ground where you can... Yeah, and I think there's some very clever design that can be done as well, where it's actually combined. Yeah, exactly. I've, I've seen some wonderful, um, both in parks and also in some buildings, where almost like the ramp and stairs are combined. So yeah. it's a design challenge, I think. Yeah. 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 There was a hand, uh, I think it was your hand up your first. They do. They do have a food hygiene course that they oh, go so on. The people have to take it, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah, they do, and um, we're we're not running that. So that was one of the winners of the the challenge. Yeah. Um, so they're running it. I think it was with YouGov, um, who set it up. But yes, that's one of the stages that any cook has to go through yeah. is to get some but basic food hygiene. Yeah. That I don't know. I just I just know that they have done a food hygiene thing. Because I, I, I did a similar project in 2017. Yeah. It, was, you know, it was a nice idea, but then one of the major factors... Yeah. Well, I'd, I'd be happy to connect you with the people that run it if you wanted to, to ask them. Yeah, I was just, I was just wondering. Yeah. Cause it, I, I think it's great that you've managed to get it out there. And mm. Yeah. Yeah. Can I fit in just a couple more questions? Your hand is going to go, Lily. You showed the, the chart of the stock. 
the 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 yeah. relation, the correlation between yeah. design led businesses. Mm. How do you? There's two things. One of them is how do you actually engage with the businesses in the first place? And how do you actually make that interaction? Mm. But also, what is it that you actually pitch to them mm. in terms of what a design led company is or does or behaves? Yeah. Um, I mean, we do we do a lot of research, both on um, previous businesses that have been through the challenge, but also with other businesses that are using design-led practices. So a lot of the time, the pitch is about the statistics that we've been able to sh prove that design has made a difference um, and what the impact has been on their turnover, on export, um, on their profit line. Um, in terms of how we engage the businesses, it's quite hard because what we're trying to get to is businesses that don't get design. So we're at very glamorous trade shows around the country, you know, sort of manufacturing shows, you know, steel shows, trying to talk about this to SMEs. Um, and, you know, they don't see design as the answer. They, they don't necessarily even want to invest in design. Um, so it's actually taking it back to, you know, what's the business issue here? Um, and talking to them about that and then bringing it around to, well, this is an approach that we believe will benefit you. Um, but... You know, it can, it's quite a hard sell, actually. And when we're talking design, we're not talking mm. how your doors open. Or no. Whatever. We're talking actually how the, how the, how the company works. And how, the com how the company works. And um, looking at, you know, the, the process we go through is one of involving as many people in the organisation as possible um, on the journey and actually looking at all the issues that they're facing. Um, and we, I didn't put it up here, but I realised actually that it would have been of interest to this room, the sort of the design approach that we take, the, the double diamonds, um, exploring everything and then honing it down into where we think design can make a difference. Um, and our associate who works with them, they don't do the design work, they, they mentor that business through following design-led processes. And at the end of it, there might be, actually we need to develop a new product range or we need to rebrand, or we need to rethink all of our touch points um, and our service strategy. Um, and at that point, they will help them appoint the right design agency to work with them on it. Okay, okay I think we had one more. Is it a quick question? Um, well, I do have a couple of them, but... Uh, one quick one. Well, thank you very much for the excellent talk to begin with. It's very <laughs> inspirational. Um, I, I'm, I'm understanding that you're actually addressing wicked problems here that mm. we didn't have, like, 50 and, and what is your strategy in, a in your approach to them? You've just spoken about the double diamond design approach. Would you like to mm. um, talk a little bit more about this, please? Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, the, the double diamond, it's a bit hard to explain without, without showing it, um, but we have four stages to it. So the first stage is discovery, um, where we look at everything. And, and we do a similar thing, actually, with, with the challenge as well. We look at everything out, um, out there, all the possible solutions. Um, and then we have um, a time of funneling it down with everybody to get to what are the key areas that we should be looking at. Then once we've got those areas that we want to look at, we do the same exercise um, again, looking at all the different approaches and answers to those issues um, before we choose which areas we want to, to focus on and where design can make a difference. Um, and we do a similar type of process when we're running um, an open innovation challenge. You know, we, we do, depends on the challenge, but the one we're running at the moment, which is called Knee High, we had six months of research, ethnographic research, out in Lambeth and Southwark looking at the issue. So we'd been asked by um, Lambeth and Southwark councils and the funder, Guys and St Thomas's Charity, to look at child development from point of conception to five years old and how we could improve those children's life chances. And that involved six months of research into talking to parents, talking to um, people who look after children in those boroughs about what the issues are. Um, and at the end of that six months of research, which was like a massive discovery phase, um, they boiled it down to three specific issues, which was um, isolation of parents um, and not feeling able to go out of the house with their children. Um, childhood development in terms of play. So a lot of play was passive. They were getting put in front of the television. Um, they weren't necessarily doing, you know, sort of interactive play, playing outdoors. So play was an issue. And the other one was parents' well-being. So the, the actual well-being of the parents. Um, what can you do to improve their well-being? Because if you have a well parent, then you have a well child. Um, those three issues then became the call for ideas. So again, we promote the call for ideas out to as many people as possible, but with that challenge, we did it very much 
wide but also locally so we got lots of ideas from the communities of Lambeth and Southwark. You then got loads of ideas, um, in this case we got 190 people submitted ideas and then we had the chance of whittling it down, okay which ideas do we think might work um, and from there we got them down to 20 and then we got into a stage of rapid prototyping. So um, you know someone was talking about you know how do you speed up things um, you know, we gave them each a small amount of seed funding to rapidly prototype their idea, um, take it out um, into those communities, test it with people, um, and then from there come back and, and re-pitch their ideas based on what they'd learnt. Um, and so from that we've gone from 20, we've now gone down to six schemes that we're funding. Um, but each stage there's this prototyping. We have a team, quite a small team actually, yeah, quite a small team of designers um, who work with them, as well as an advisory panel which is made up of people from you know across the boroughs, but also from chartered psychologist specialists and things like that, who feed back on those ideas, um, as well as people on the ground, you know, parents feeding back about the projects. So, thank okay, you. thank you. I'm going to need to stop the questions there for now. Thank you. Thank you.